Hello, good evening and welcome to Sunday Live Discussion Session with me, Antara. Tonight, our guest is author Namita Das, who has written uh, a comedy novella, a short story. Um, she has compiled an anthology. She has contributed to several uh, co-authored titles. Uh, her recent released comedy novella titled It's Funny, Oops, I Mean Funny, is all about an aspiring author and aspiring writer Anu who is looking for her muse to complete her novel and how she happens to end up writing about her daily life as a story as a story as her novel she she brings in characters from her daily life to her novel novel and and how it goes about it, like it's it's basically the crux of the story so i'm sure there are a lot more and uh, into this story and i'm sure there's so many things that um, the author would want to share with every one of us so without wasting further time let me send a uh, request to namita to join the session and we'll continue the discussion with her together so we are waiting for namita to join us now uh think any comments any suggestions share it on the comment section or if it is a question share it on the question section and i'll read it out to her so we are waiting for namita to join the session and here she is hi namita hi hi andra how are you i am fine how are you i'm doing good how you are in mumbai right um no i am not in okay India. oh okay okay all right all right so i i i assume it's uh, the scenario is pretty under control uh, wherever you are outside india right um right now uh, the cases are increasing over here but it's still oh, pretty okay. good better than what okay. it was but okay. still i mean until this goes away it's still there so you guys are going out or uh how how is it how is the situation uh, i am in uganda right now and i'm staying okay. in entebbe so this town okay. is it not pretty mm. populated so we are still good like we go down, we okay. go out there's no lockdown but we have a curfew starting at 9 pm mm. in the evening okay. till 6 am okay. in the morning so otherwise supermarkets are open restaurants are open but we have to maintain all the those protocols mm. of wearing mask and having sanitizers right, right. and social distancing so social distancing still, right. okay but do you know that fear is always there yes but then it's it seems like it's a uh, pretty decent to handle yes. unlike yeah. but, what's going uh, on in it. the uh, the good thing is because it's not so populated uh, the population right, is very right, really limited right. over here so mm. we are still okay considering it's easy like to i was handle. yeah right because i was in mumbai before this and i can really imagine the situation what it would be in mumbai right, considering right. the population and the traffic and everything right so namita a coding analyst and engineer uh, to a published author tell me how why and when it happened tell me from the beginning Okay, so this thing from engineer to author, this was this is not something that was pre-planned or well thought of yeah. that I'm going to do mm-hmm. this. So I was working in J.P. Morgan. One fine day, my okay. husband came to me and said that I got an offer and they are asking me to move to Uganda. What do mm-hmm. you say? Now moving to Uganda was something that required me to quit my job. and i was already working for 14 years and i was like i have already spent so much time in my career but do i really want to quit at that time then i had my two and a half year old son i saw him and i thought it's a good opportunity let's try it i mean i'll go oh. to uganda i can stay with him then mm-hmm. i can spend some time with him i can at least do my objective of a mother i can do that what i really wanted yeah, to do yeah. so i quit my job i came here initial few days were very good i was enjoying my new role of being a housewife and a full time mother but then after few days that boredom started to creep in a person right. who has who is always busy like 8 hours in a project your mind is always uh, working that person has to sit at home i mean motherhood Absolutely. is uh, is something that will it will it will keep you juggling the whole day but still you are not that occupied comparatively when you are working so at that time i thought that let's start writing because i already 
I already used to write. I I was blogging in Facebook, but I was not a full time mm-hmm. writer. I never gave that thought that I should write something full fledged into a book. So I thought, let's write. So I wrote this book, and then I pitched into publishers. This got selected by Kiwi Books India. It got published, and then after that, I wrote a short story, and then I'm writing another book. So this is how it happened. Like I went in the flow, and it just happened to me. So I'm pretty happy now. <laughs> so you you sharing your story and it you you mentioned that it was not planned it you had not planned but the, i think the universe had already planned yes. and mm. that is how it all came into being because mm. otherwise if you would not had quit your job or moved to mm. uganda you it would not been. have you know got got the time to write it, and because I, this was something that was in my mind since a child like when i was 14 years old one of my teachers asked me what you want to do and i told her that i want to be a journalist i want to write articles i want to write essays i want to write columns but that never materialized i mean as hmm. i grew my parents were more into you become an engineer or you become a doctor hmm. do something of that you know the yes, uh, yes. typical indian parental mindset so i went with them like uh, like an obedient child i said okay i'll become an engineer and then engineering happened to me then it happened but then i think this is what something i was destined to do so, right 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 so so everything happens for a reason and yes. i think i'm so glad that uh, we have you as a published writer we have all your books with us uh, you have already written uh, published two and uh, 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 it's funny oops i mean a uh, funny it's mm. it also has a sequel right a short story mm. sequel to mm. it that's uh, happily technically ever after so mm. um, and also i have come across many readers who have read your first book it's funny and they have mentioned that there are many uh, there are few noteworthy characters in that novella uh, yeah. for example apart from the main character anu uh, for example uh, mr tots mr husband uh, and then mrs <laughs> Mrs. Upset, Mrs. <laughs> uh, Empire, Auntie. So, mm. uh, I firstly tell me whether these characters, these are very, I think, uh, like these are very important characters throughout the novella. Yeah. But I would mm. really want to know whether these characters get carried forward to the sequel, and how do you get into these characters? How do you write them? What inspires you to come up with these characters? Hmm. Too so many the, questions. <laughs> yeah, I I know, but I am thinking from where to start and what all to answer and how to answer. Okay, so coming to the names. So the thing is that um, whenever I'm writing a story, naming a character is the toughest part for me. I can never <laughs> name a character because I'm always confused what name would so suit this character. So initial my initial manuscript did not have the name Anu as well. it all okay. all the draft said i did this i did this it was like the protagonist is telling her story but then my publisher when he accepted the manuscript he said that you should at least give a name to whoever is narrating the story because if you don't give a name it will look like you are just giving out your autobiography and so no it's not my autobiography then at that time i thought that okay let's name so i just remembered some random name i gave it named it as named it as anu then uh, the best thing was that because as i told you that i cannot name people so i just named them as per the characteristics the husband becomes mr husband the kid becomes he's a toddler so i named as mr tots then Tot. um, the upset the mrs upset because she's always upset so i named her mrs upset and umpire auntie has a story why we call her umpire auntie because there's something that she says that she has 11 kids in her home so we named her like okay 11 you manage 11 people in your house so that means you're an umpire <laughs> so we named her as right, umpire right right mm-hmm. right and each of these characters have their individuality as well like when you read them uh, you you get the feel uh, of you know coming across a different character so how mm. do you manage to come up with this individuality of each character um it happened because uh, for example if i talk about umpire auntie so she she is a real person actually and this incident had happened with us so when we moved into our house there was a neighbor and she was like a middle aged auntie who came into the house and without much introduction or without much uh, talking she just asked us where is where are our kids 
and uh, we didn't have anyone at that time and we were already <laughs> four years of married uh, we were four years so we thought like i mean it's being too nosy to ask such questions right, so right. we just like named her umpire auntie because and then that 11 kids thing came up then again mrs upset because she's always upset with her husband she's always complaining so i named her mrs upset so it was more like peculiarly the characteristics that they show i was trying to put that in and mr husband is like very obvious <laughs> why is mr husband <laughs> because he's mr husband <laughs> Because <laughs> that is the only role he has that he has to do all the all the work of husband and husband like yeah, you you have to annoy you have to annoy me you have to irritate me you have to give me sarcasms when I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's really funny. So has it ever happened occurred with you like uh, if you are naming someone like Mrs. Mm-hmm. Umpire Auntie or Mrs. Mm-hmm. Upset and they actually come in front of you uh, and has it, has it ever happened like by mistake you and your husband like it slipped out of your mouth uh, has it ever happened like this no actually luckily that that hasn't happened yet but uh, i was more worried about if these people read this book and then they realize that they are the <laughs> they are the people those characters who, oh they are the characters so we like after the book was published i myself gave this book to those certain people so, and then i thought what if they realize that this is based on them <laughs> then, till now no one no one came back complaining but it's okay i mean i'm still worried so whenever i na- write the next story in fact whenever i write i am worried that what if people read and understand this is something that they said or this is something that i am making fun of them in my book <laughs> or they will become conscious like conscious n- like not do not open mouth yeah. in front of them yeah she, she might, might just <laughs> you know, and in the end in a very different way because the the story of mrs upset it it was a very serious thing which was going on at that time the conversation was quite serious and the joke that came later uh, <laughs> i never thought that it will turn out to be such a funny story and even i am sure even she did not think about it but now when i See, yes, I feel like yeah, I mean, it changed. I know it changed. Yeah. So actually, my family has the habit of you know putting nicknames to people, to our neighbors or family friends. and it has actually me asking you this question was because it has happened. Like we we grew up hearing that nickname, and then we would put a suffix like uncle or auntie. after the yeah. nickname we did not even know the <laughs> real name and actually mm. we had ad- addressed uh, the people with the nickname and it was very embarrassing for our parents and our i can uh, understand after that so <laughs> so i could actually relate to that but mm. i think uh, yes so it it's it's really i think it's very difficult even if you are um, going through that moment in your real life a very mm. comedy situation or a very funny situation but it becomes very difficult to put it in writing um like if you want to write a comedy or a very humorful situation i think it's it's the most toughest thing so tell me namita how how uh, is it difficult or easy for you to write comedy or like is it natural uh, does it come naturally to you or it's it's something acquired how mm. how is it with you Yeah. Before I answer that question, I need two seconds of your time. I think I need to switch off the light. It's really getting okay, dark okay. over sure, here. Okay, okay, sure, sure, no problem. But just, no just problem. one second. Yes, we'll admire the painting, the book cover rather. We'll admire that. I am really sorry for this one. <laughs> no, 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 that's that's perfectly okay. all right. so uh, writing comedy so the thing was that uh, when i was writing humor i never felt that it is very tough for me because i just went with the flow but whenever i was writing like if i have to put out a joke in one of the uh, stories so i would do what happened in real life like if i have to say that uh, he said something like it was a pun so i will just mold the story before and after and i'll just put it there so honestly i never felt the writing humor was a very tough task but then there's there's this anthology that i uh, mm-hmm. uh, compiled and edited at that time i really had a tough time getting humor authors so we can talk about that later i'll tell you what the yes, journey yes, was but, but then at that time i really um, 
understood that writing humor might not be so easy for others like i felt so for me for me something which is easy is not it might be tough for someone else similarly when i said that i have to write thrill i can't write thrilling stories or i can't write action but for someone it is a cake walk they can just right right write it so that's it yes so maybe uh, that's how you look at situations in real life maybe mm. that's you look at things with a very mm. funny angle or with mm. a pun angle and mm. maybe that is why it is easier yeah. for you so yes so that that's really um, great um so i'll i'll just take a moment here um mm. and mm. i'll let our um, friends who have joined us uh, know that we are talking i'm talking to namita das author uh, she has written several uh, books first one that i'm talking to uh, her about is it's funny uh, oops i mean funny uh, it's a comedy novella and then it also has a short story sequel titled uh, happily technically ever after and then Hello. she there are a few more which we are going to talk about later both these titles are available on amazon so if you are looking for something light and something funny to read then grab yourselves a copy um there are few comments i can see so i'll just read them out so there's someone who is saying there's someone namita wu who that is rocky babani okay <laughs> sometimes nicknames are only remembered that is anand sharan and that's absolutely the case with me and my cousin um even last night i think i was discussing with my mother that why my grandfather like did he refer to them with these nicknames uh, even in person and she was like no he has not done that so uh, so uh, namita would you like to read something for us i think there are few couple of uh, people watching so would you like to read anything from your of course i can let me let me see what will i read um okay i'll read one story from the book the chapter name is demo please so let me see what page it is okay so the chapter name is demo please and i have mentioned a quote before the start of the chapter which says the cars we drive say a lot about us this is a quote by alexandra paul so the story starts like mr husband had been very has been rather fidgety for the last few weeks i was trying hard not to budge but he smoothly convinced me to visit showrooms to see new cars almost every weekend he wanted to get the best car in place which was bulky looked trendy and provided safety features at the same time wo it is not too much to ask for he said As usual this weekend too we were sitting at the glamorous showroom Mr husband started inquiring about the automobile and I sat I sat sat beside him yawning unwillingly listening to the sales guy's recitation sir it's a good choice the car has blah 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 Mr husband was no less my analysis says blah 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 trying to show off all the knowledge he had as he had he was the one to invent this mechanism I tuned into my snooze mode realizing this would go on for some time but my nap was disturbed by a tap on my back come on let's see the demo car i wanted to growl but i simply grinned see this is the feature blah 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 started his monologue again mr husband was listening quietly for a long while and the sales guy broke into his thoughts sir do you want to test drive yeah i would love to check it please get into the car along with ma'am let's take a test drive Oh no, I want to check the safety features first. This confused the sales guy. Sir, this car has multiple safety features. It has 6 airbags. Right. Could you just drive it and dash it after 200 meters? I would like to see a demo of how the airbags are deployed. What? The sales guy jumped out of the car displaying a demo feature he might have just invented namely SIS, springs in seat. Before Mr. Husband could blurt out any more, I jabbered He's just kidding please don't mind we'll come back next week we need to rush now 
I pulled Mr. Husband out of the showroom. As we moved out, I whispered in his ears, "Let's get out of here before he calls the mental hospital." But why? I did ask for a plain spoken demo. If the car has feature, why can't they show it in actuals? I wanted to shout my lungs out, but only decided to purse my lips. On second thoughts, it was not an invalid request, but an experientially impossible demo to demand. So basically, this has happened. My husband went to the showroom and he did ask <laughs> to, <laughs> to show to show a demo of how airbags are deployed. <laughs> Oh my! God. Oh my God! So I, I'm sure the entire book, the entire novella has such stories. Also, as Anu is writing a novel, so it's full of such short, funny uh, stories, and and it's it's actually hilarious at times reading and going through. There is one of the readers who has joined us, um, food and book nook. She's saying, I just love the, that book. Um, <laughs> thank you so, so much so it's it's awesome story i loved it so that's author anand and then i can see few smileys coming up so it's it seems like people have enjoyed and as i said that writing comedy and humor i think is the most toughest job and if you can bring a s- simple smile uh, to the readers lips then i think you should be happy about your work is done So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Namita, you you mentioned about okay. Uh, before we go to the next question, I really wanted to know whether those characters are also uh, present in the sequel, happily, technically ever after, um, Mrs. Empire and no. Empire Actually, and, no? the sequel okay. is a very short story, so it has only Anu okay. and Mr. Husband. It it's it's okay, about okay. a New Year resolution that where Anu has taken a resolution and. Uh, she and mr husband are arguing about it like she says that she is technically following it but according to mr husband she is not then <laughs> then the story goes ahead like how mr husband is behaving everything beha- behaving in a different way and to justify he always says that he is also doing it technically correct so you know the use usage of words and tweaking it in a way and saying that i technically did the it the pun right right the pun so that yes. story is about that so uh, incidentally i did not put anyone else in that but maybe in the next sequel i would so i you mentioned you have a blog and i think it's called a uh, pen it rather he it and mm. uh, i think most of your blogs are also humor based and mm. comedy so tell me there are so many different sub genres of comedy so which which genre you you intend to pursue or it's like is the broad umbrella like any anything any comedy is fun fine with you if if i if i be honest i never thought about what sub genres are there what kind of comedy should be there until and unless it is bringing a smile on my readers face my work is done i don't i don't get into those nicks and nacks of how it is what category it falls in it's just that it should be clean comedy i can't go below the belt that is not my type but uh, it is clean and everyone can read it anyone who is a reader can read it that's what i think great great so you have also compiled an anthology recently and uh, it's titled i think a jar full of joys mm-hmm. um, tell me how your experience was working with 13 different authors writers Uh, coming together for this uh, anthology how the, so, the this is a this is a very interesting thing that had happened with me when i was just starting to write i was getting into the field of writing i was trying to understand what is the publishing industry what happens so i initially i co- co-authored a few of the books i would give my content and uh, they'll uh, po- publish into a book but i was not getting anything in return somehow i stumbled on ink feathers publishing page and there i found that they were a little different they were compensating you for your work so i was okay. a little amazed that because they, and they sounded very different so i thought i'll co-author with them and see how it goes mm-hmm. i co-authored two books with them and i was very happy with the process the the team was cooperative the mm-hmm. the submission process to publishing was very smooth then i saw that they also have an opening for anthology editor so i thought let's give it a try i mean it's oh. it's a good experience and i got selected so there what happened they told me that it's all my choice 
what I want to do. I can select the theme. I can select the writer. They will give me all the resources. So I was happy. Okay, and I thought that humor is something that I always write. Let's write mm-hmm. a humor anthology. So let's try right, that. Right. So I went ahead, went ahead and gave them this proposal that this is my proposal. I want to write a humor anthology, and I go and search for the writers. Writers. So, right. so initially, also. Um, my manager who was there he said that it might be a little difficult to get humor authors but there's no harm in trying you should always try and see what happens i set out to find out 25 authors that was my goal that i want 25 authors i'm going to connect with them it took me like 4 4 and 1/2 months and i could only find 13 and i was i mean at that time i was thinking that is it, is it so difficult to write humor because i was always writing humor so i never thought that it it is a rare thing that people right, are so right. rare you cannot get them but then somehow i finalized the 13 authors and i was like i'm so happy that i have at least 13 people who are like minded who write what i like to write and who understand what i am trying to understand then then and the thing is that these 13 people they are so cooperative and so patient with me i had edited their stories and i went back to them telling them what changes i have made what needs to be done if there were anything they would come back and tell me what needs to be done so from submission to publishing and now right now it is in pre order phase they have been really really patient i'm really glad that i found them plus ink feathers they have been so supportive with me that uh when i was uh, trying to find authors and i was very depressed at that time i'm not getting any authors i don't think if i will be able right. to complete this project itself then they said that you keep trying it's okay you take your time we understand that writing humor is not easy we are very supportive of you you do you at least try don't give up so i was like okay let me try then i went back and told them i i think i failed here i can't get you 25 writers these are the 13 writers if you can manage they said okay for that effort so they did not let my effort go waste so that no, was the best no. part of working with them that they, they that they had my back over there that okay if you find okay. this we'll go ahead and publish this because this is the effort and time that i had given those 13 writers oh. had given so right now this book is in pre order phase it is uh, supposed to be launched on 19th and i'm really really excited to see the pre order phase the response is also very good because the writers who are in my team they are aggressively promoting it and i'm so okay. happy that i have them with me right, so let's see right. how it comes out just waiting for so the it so it sounds it sounds really interesting to read an anthology uh, with short stories from the humor or comedy yeah. genre so i'm i'm actually now intrigued to read it and all my best wishes for its release it's about to as you mentioned about to yeah. be released on 19th of june yes. and uh, it's available on amazon yeah. as a pre order status so if anyone wants to grab a copy of it so feel free visit amazon and you can get all namita's yes. books over there yeah. so so it sounds it sounds really interesting so um, you are also i think you have just finished writing a children's book as well mm-hmm. keen uh, keen little kuku kuku <laughs> so yeah is it is it is it published yet or is it about to be published no it was written way back like last year oh okay 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 and, okay uh, it's, it's already published no no not published but i was pitching it to publishers and i finally it was finally selected by target publications so they okay, are okay. In, more into children's books and educational material so it's into pre publication stage and it's in the last leg any time okay. uh, by the month and we should be expecting that book out okay so what's the story all about uh this story is actually uh, there's a back story of why i wrote this story my son he had a little speech delay so we were very uh, you know tensed about why it has you know it has not uh, picked up so i was talking to her therapist once and she his therapist and she was saying that when you talk to him um, talk more in adjectives and words tell him like it's a blue color car is a yellow color fruit so and read a lot so these were like these two tips that she had given me so i used to read but then i found that there are, i did not find a book which will you know do what she is asking me to because when i have an alphabet book it will say a for apple b for ball c for cat and That's i was like it. if i have yeah. to if i have to show him color i'll have to go to some other book and or some other book. page and tell him that this is red color this is yellow color so i thought why not put all this in one story and at the same time i used to take him for evening walks 
so while we we both were on a walk and i was talking to him i was telling him that see that's a yellow butterfly see that's a pink flower so i was talking to him and i thought why i can write this into a story and that is what the story came up like i said that kuku and mama are going on an evening walk and they see a lot of things so they see something first thing is avocado then a for avocado it's green it's bright it has a brown seed inside so it's it's poetic so i have written like two or three uh, lines of poem so it will when a kid reads it he he'll also have some right. to you know jingle yeah. upon so right it, it will make like the kids also will be interested in reading what reading that and in that one page of alphabet they'll read colors shapes and uh, some adjectives like bright color bright or big right, huge right. long so that was my agenda so that was the reason why i wrote this so let's see when it comes out how it goes with kids okay. so that's like a lot of upcoming releases for you so <laughs> this children's book i think uh, we will see it towards in couple of months as you mentioned right uh, no by the end, end of this of... month end of okay, this month okay all right itself. it's almost wow, in the last so, like everything is done we are just waiting for the release so it's like it's a very active month for you like yes. oh, <laughs> two <laughs> releases wow <laughs> so all my best wishes for you, you. So i i really hope that uh, both the new releases do well as uh, your existing titles are doing they are like getting read by so many people there is one more comment that i can see and it's by anand sharan those bitch couples must be hearing or uh, might have read the book and came to know now that mr husband was actually charging uh, charging fee for the services okay I, <laughs> that might be an insight that's Joke. a different no that's a different story i think he has read the book and is just mentioning that okay okay it's a right. different so, story so now like we need to go and get ourselves a copy i have a copy i have not read it so but now i'm more intrigued to you know go through the pages and get it done like read it as well <laughs> as quickly as and possible and finish it it should be in your june read list yes absolutely <laughs> adding another completed read in my reading challenge yeah. so uh, so let's let's talk about you namita like uh, i what kind of reader are you like do you read a lot um are you reading anything currently i read a lot i mean i am not a netflix person or youtube person i don't like to watch a lot of things i do but it's not that i don't do at all i am always updated about the new shows that are coming in but what i do mostly is i do read if you if you but what i read is particularly different from what other people read i mean i won't go and read something that has a buzz because you know sometimes buzz is how right. buzz is created but i mm-hmm. i don't really follow the herd thing if you see my good reads profile you will see that i have comics <laughs> and i read a lot and i read a lot of indie authors okay. and i also read uh, self help books sometimes like when i think that i need um, some self motivation i do read that yeah. yeah so right now i am reading uh, life in the uniform by amit lodha it's a non fiction okay. book and it's his own story that how he was in iit then he went into ips and then he was transferred to bihar and how his mm-hmm. life as a policeman uh, went through so this is something that i'm reading and as a reader i cannot leave a book unfinished like if i have started reading a book right i feel i feel it's a crime that you're not finishing that book so i definitely finish whatever i pick it up pick up unless and until it's like very very pathetic that i cannot read at all so that hasn't happened in the past yeah, but same I, with me. yeah yeah but if if it is there i i cannot like i always think what must have happened in the end i should find out i should find i cannot leave it here so that that confusion sometimes, and that excitement yes. is always there sometimes it happens like aur kitni galtiyan hongi so let me read it to figure out how many mistakes that there yeah. so i i keep on reading to figure yeah. out that also but then i never like keep any book unfinished but i am yeah. a very slow reader so yeah. like i finished one book that is shashi tharoor's mm-hmm. the great indian novel it took me like Three months almost to complete it. Three months. So, <laughs> so I'm a very pretty slow reader, mm-hmm. and uh, but then 
it's like it's every day like i i'll read every day but then uh, i i'm 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 a very slow like slow reader because the thing is that when i said uh, this year start i said that i'll take a 100 book challenge oh and, my uh, god and i told my friend that this year i'm going to read 100 books and he said how how is it even possible that you'll read 100 books i said you see i'll read 100 books then i started reading novels and those huge 300 pages books and then after some time i got bored that these, these are such large books then i picked up comics and then after one comic after <laughs> I started reading comics, and now I am like, how many books? I think I have read fifty-two or fifty-three this year. So I said, see, I am on target. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good way to go about it. <laughs> see, I never now said I know that. how people read. I, I, I never said <laughs> four hundred books in a year. <laughs> yeah, I never said that it will be a large book only, or it should be like big novel only. Book is a book. Tinkle Comics, they are books. So we should right, read. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Even I have read one graphic novel this year, and mm-hmm. I just quickly went after finishing it. I quickly went and added it on Goodreads. Like yeah. I have read it. I read so it. I, <laughs> so it's like I I understand. But then yeah. this year I I intend to complete twenty eight, and I'm pretty. I'm not as ambitious as you are, mm-hmm. but I hope uh, <laughs> I'll be able to uh, <laughs> meet the challenge. So there is someone who is saying that I am reading Diamond Comics. Diamond Comics. <laughs> That's my husband. So, my husband's territory. He likes Diamond Comics. I don't know whether these are still available. Like you, uh, you will get somewhere. I mean, if I think Amazon, you will get on Kindle also. Okay. But they're okay, there, okay. still there. Still, still available. There. Great. So uh, I think we have come to the end of this session, uh, <coughs> Namita. But before we wrap up. Uh, would you like to share? I know this this month is huge for you, but then are you <laughs> working on anything else? Have you started working on anything new? That again, you will say it's so huge for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So now I'll I'll spill some more secrets. So I have finished writing a horror comedy, and I'm already okay. pitching it. I got a positive response from one of the publishers, but let's see if it goes ahead and if I sign a contract. But I have one upcoming book that's horror comedy. The genre, actually, I one of my friends told me that you should write horror. She was very like, you always write humor, write horror also. I love horror. I said, okay, I'll write a horror for you. And me being me, even while writing horror, I became I started tilting it towards humor. So I said, okay, I'll keep horror and humor both and make it a humor uh, horror comedy thing. And I finished that story. Now let's see. I mean, by when it comes out. But comes that out. was that is my upcoming project. If I say like which is ready, and apart from that, I'm I have two three things going in my mind. Let's see which one materializes. Right. So I am I'm, I'm so intrigued, and I'm looking forward to all your releases, especially like like I have laughed a lot during this <laughs> session today. So it was hilarious. Thank you so much for making me laugh, and I'm, I'm so looking much. forward to reading your book. I'm sure I laugh. A lot more. I was die-hard fan of Chacha Chaudhary, someone Hemant Patil, yeah. and yeah. he was one who person. Why was you I, can be? You can still be a fan of Chacha Chaudhary. <laughs> There's no past yes. tense over here. <laughs> right. I am. I think I still use that. You know, one line from Chacha Chaudhary. You know, computer se bhi tez dimag. I still <laughs> use that. <laughs> Mera dimag computer se bhi tez hai. So I still use that sentence. Um, there is someone else who said that I have the online copies of Chacha Chaudhary. So yes, so Chacha Chaudhary has to be the all-time favorite, all of yeah, us. So, yeah, as a gr- child, growing child, you all, everyone had Chacha Chaudhary. Right, right. While growing up, mm. so great. Thank you, uh, Namita, for joining me. Thank you for doing this session, talking such lovely things. Funny things and making me laugh. I'm sure others who have watched it, they have also laughed, and who will watch the recording will also laugh. I'll also share your recommendation um, on our IG story board sure. so that people wants to uh, refer or recommend, they can do that. And uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you. Uh, hope we'll do. We'll catch up soon again. Yeah. Uh, sure. When your 
all the other upcoming releases are there and <laughs> we we get to talk about something yeah. new i'll just so keep we'll a heap it. of heap of my books over here i'll not show my face i'll just skip my books <laughs> you can talk uh, <laughs> in in coming 3 months i i'm sure it's going to be like yeah. touching the roof your hopefully, releases hopefully, in next yeah so that's Excellent. great thank you so much thank you so take much andra thank you so much bye bye thank you take care Good night. Bye. Good so, night. Good night. So, people, that was Namita Das, author of "It's Funny, Oops, I Mean Funny." She has written um, a comedy novella. Uh, this novella also has a short story sequel, and then she is also releasing one of her anthologies, which she has edited and compiled, "A uh, Jar Full of Joys." It is about to be released on nineteenth of June, and then she is also about to release a children's book. um kin little kuku these are all going to be available on amazon so if you want to grab a copy of namita's book visit um amazon and get yourself a copy next sunday i'll be back with another guest till then take care happy reading happy sunday bye